So for this first review of 2014, I th thought I'd look at the Habu 2, Park Zone Habu 2. It's been around for a while, and I know there are quite a few reviews out there, but I thought I'd do something different. If you look at the reviews that are out there on YouTube, they're typically the fresh out of the box reviews, just looking at the components and how it slots together, how you assemble it, or of the first maiden flight type review. Well, I'm, what you're looking at here is a Habu that's done 300 plus flights and have certainly been put through a lot of punishment and been taking it down to the to the flying field almost every time I go down there and putting five or six flights on it. So the flights have really mounted up and I've had to do modifications to it to you know make it make it last yeah, and uh, make, keep it flying in the same way. Now I haven't had to do a lot to it. It's it's a it's a great um, airframe out of the box you just have to screw it together it, in terms of its engineering and it, how, how well thought out it is it it really is so simple to put it together it comes to the receiver the uh, servos already in place and hooked up you don't even have to hook up the servos to the control surfaces you literally just have to screw the, the wing and the rudder and the tail plane onto the, onto the uh, fuselage and your bind to your transmitter and put in your flight pack a 4S3300 lipo and you're good to go so in terms of the way it flies it's pretty fantastic you know you, c you can't really beat it for, for what it is um, I wouldn't say it's the best aerobatic 70 mil EDF model out there it doesn't do it does nice four point rolls it does nice smooth rolls uh, it does all the other jet aerobatics, but it's not ultra smooth, I wouldn't say. If you want something that's that flies really pure uh, for aerobatics, then look at the, the Tomahawk 70mm uh, Viper jet. That really is fantastic, but that has its drawbacks. That doesn't have flaps, it doesn't have retracts, whereas the Habu 2 here does. Now, its predecessor, the Habu 1, didn't. So what Park Zone have done? They've really, really thought about what people out there want, and they they provided with the that ability to have flaps and retracts out of the box. So fitting the flaps is is pretty easy. You just have to separate the uh, make a make a cut to separate it from the, from the aileron, and fit the the servos and wire those through to the receiver and the same with the retracts really the mounts are already there so all you have to do is screw in the the retracts and wire them through to the receiver and and you're good to go the one thing uh, that you have to change obviously this is the the cover for the free the retracts that you get out of the box for the fixed um, fixed landing gear so you take this off and you fit the other one that they actually provide for the retracts that has the, the hole cut in, in it so that the retract can come in and out. Now the, the other thing I'll mention at this point is inevitably you're going to have the, a, a crash at some point, we all do. Um, but if you get a replacement fuselage which is you know 10 to 15 pounds, it's not a lot of money and it's going to be the first thing you, you're going to break. You typically with these foamy jets break off break off the nose or do something worse and that's what I've done at least once and the wings stay pretty much unharmed but what you get with the replacement fuselage is only this so what you'll find you'll need to do is to cut most of this away. You'll, you'll want this screwed on because it looks a lot better with it on but you're, you're going to have to use a Dremel to, to cut all of this out so that the retract um, still works and that's exactly what I've done with this one if you look look here this isn't the original cover this is the uh, the replacement one if I hold up that one next to that one you can see that I've, that I've cut it out so it's pretty easy to do but that's the biggest bit that you have to do when you get that replacement fuselage one really nice thing that they've done the replacement fuselage um, and you'll notice when you get it out of the box, the wires for the rudder and the elevator, the servo leads, the extensions, are already in here. And they are in the replacement fuselage as well, so you don't have to go through the difficulty of having to insert it here and pull it through. It's already there, so all you have to do is take this off your crashed fuselage and connect them up, screw those back on to your replacement fuselage. Um, and put them in the extensions in, in this side into the receiver and you're good to go. It's really really that simple. 
Okay, so in terms of other mods, and you'll find this with most other foamy airframes, is you're going to have to add carbon here and there to stiffen it up as the foam gets a little softer, maybe in the sun or after you've flown it a few a few times, and that's easily done. So I've used a five mil by half mil strip on the wings here to st to stiffen those up, on the nose here, and also on the uh, the elevators here. Okay, so in terms of the other mod that's necessary when you fit retracts and flaps, you'll find that the battery needs to go further back because of um, the distribution of the weight and to achieve the right CG, the battery needs to go back as far as possible. So this is a, a small AR600 Spectrum receiver. Because of the additional wires that you're going to have coming through from the, the flaps and the retracts, you're going to need, you'll find you're going to need to trim them back and do, maybe do a bit of soldering to reduce the amount of excess uh, servo extension that you have because you're going to need to pack it back as far as possible. And also, more importantly, there's a big chunk of foam that you have in here uh, that you're going to need to carve out so that the so it's level with the this forward part here. <coughs> And then your your lipo will fit in really nicely and give you the right CG. Just get that around there like that. And the small thing they they do give you a nice little bit of um, tape um, to put be able to pull off the the canopy easily, but that does break. It's only a very thin tape, so. Use this fiber, replace it with this um, fiber tape, and that'll that'll last forever. Really important to select the right flight packs. Here I've got two 4S3300 packs, but the notable difference is that the one is 65 to 130C discharge rated and the other is 35 to 70 C. So you'd think that that one would be better. Not for this airframe. One, the uh, the 6530 C discharge um, pack is significantly heavier. It's maybe 25% heavier. For it to pack that amount of energy, that, I guess it needs to be that, that heavy. But that, that additional weight has a big impact on the flight characteristics of the Habu 2 so I would recommend going for lighter packs they should still need to be uh, 40C at least rated I would say but certainly nowhere up to 130C it, it doesn't really make any difference it doesn't give you any additional power that I've seen uh, that overcomes the additional weight that you add uh, by using using that pack so stick with those Okay, so after everything I've said, would I recommend buying a Habu 2? And I would say, maybe. Why maybe, after everything I've great I've said about it? And that's because there's another model on the market called the Dynam Meteor that is virtually the same, but is almost half the money. For £105, you can get the Dynam Meteor the same, pretty much out of the box, although it has a different covering scheme um, that may not be as appealing. I don't think, personally, it looks as good as the Habu 2. But it's it's half the price. It's 105 pounds uh, from Model Bow UK, whereas the Habu 2 I think is retails for around 200 now. So look up the Dynam Meteor before you decide on buying a Habu 2. Worthwhile looking into that. Otherwise, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more reviews of models. That is going to be a lot different to other reviews on the on YouTube for these types of models and I'm going to be taking video at a lot of shows in the UK over 2014 so please subscribe using the bottom you can see now in the top right of the screen and uh, catch up soon thanks for watching